What's up guys, Rogue9 here and we have once again been blessed with the Rainbow Six Siege designer notes which give us a closer insight into how each operator is currently performing and how much they are picked. As always, this also includes a bit of background explanation from the devs giving us their reasoning behind the upcoming nerfs and buffs for Kavera, Doc, Rook, Clash and Kaed. So why don't we take a look at these stats to see what they can teach us. How are the individual operators performing and how have they changed since last season? Follow me. Many thanks to Mastrop and the Sennheiser PC37X gaming headset for sponsoring this video. If you've been following my Twitch streams, you will have seen me using this headset quite extensively over the last few months and I have to say I'm really happy with it. Sennheiser is of course known for great quality speakers and great quality speakers translate into great quality sound. The microphone mutes itself automatically once you flip it up and you get a volume control on the other side and with the headset being light and comfortable to wear over long periods of time I would say that this headset is a great all-in-one solution for anyone looking for a mic and headphone combo but don't just take my word for it the headset currently has 595 reviews on the Mastrop website with a great customer rating of 4.5 out of 5 stars. So if you're in the market for a great quality headset, I can only recommend the PC37X and if you use the link in the description below, it shows Mastrop that you came from me. Before diving into the stats, let me quickly walk you through what you will see in these charts. On the x-axis of the chart is the pick rate in percent. This shows us how popular an operator is. For example, Ash is picked around 72% of the time, which means that in 7 out of 10 rounds of Siege played over the last 3 months, there is an Ash on the attacking team. That's quite a lot. On the y-axis we have the win delta in percent and this stat is an indicator for the operator's performance. It is calculated by taking the win percentage of a team including the operator and subtracting the win percentage without that operator. So if over the last 3 months attacking teams with an ash won let's say 49% of the time and teams without an ash won 48% of the time then the thousands of rounds taken into consideration would indicate that on average teams with an ash are slightly more likely to win than without her. I hope that makes sense. Yes, I see you all nodding vigorously, so let's move on. One last note is on how we should interpret this information and indeed how the developers interpret it. The fact is that these stats alone are not guaranteed proof of an operator being over or underpowered and the developers only use these charts as an initial indicator to see which operators they need to take a closer look at. They then go away and examine additional stats as well as player and pro player feedback before they make any decisions regarding nerfs or buffs. And that's actually quite important because the win delta can fluctuate quite a lot without any specific reason. Take for instance Capcan. In season 2 he was one of the worst defenders of all, then without any specific changes to him, apart from the general recoil change for all guns, he became the second most powerful defender in season 3. Now in season 4, once again without any change, he's backed off a little and is only at a win delta of around plus 0.6%. In my eyes, not even enough to really conclude that he is overperforming. Another great example here is Finca. Last season her win rate was only around 0.25% and this season she's back up to over 2.5% making her the best performing attacker. Long story short, fluctuations can occur and it's important that you do take these figures as what they are. An indicator of performance, not irrefutable proof of being over or underpowered. So now that we have reminded ourselves of these principles, let's see who the best and worst performers are this season and who has had significant changes. I already mentioned Finca, queen of all attackers, except that she's only picked about 6% of the time. But hey, that's still 3 times more than last season, so a drastic rise in popularity, compared to a very humble starting position. Why has she soared to such a high win delta? Well, there's not been a change to her since season 2, so it can only be down to players starting to pick her a little more and using her more effectively. She is still significantly underpicked though and given her pretty mediocre performance last season I think when it comes to nerfing a wait and see approach is absolutely fair here. 
Blackbeard is also still a very strong performer despite a slight decrease in pick rate and win delta over last season. For most players, his appallingly bad weapons and slow movement speed make him an okay pick, but since these stats are based on ranked matches at the plat or diamond level only, he does quite well as always. I understand that at high level of play, the couple of extra bullets to the face he can tank make him overpowered and even downright broken, but for most normal players, he's in an okay place and I even understand when players think he's weak nowadays. All in all, I can again understand why he's not getting nerfed despite being one of the best performers on these charts. And besides that, I would call all the other operators decently balanced from a wind delta perspective. Between plus and minus 1.5% is really nothing that would scream, Oh my god, this character is so horrible, please do something. I understand that at various skill and experience levels, different operators can feel really frustrating to play against. I think this frustration factor is a great term that Get Flanked mentioned not so long ago on one of our Hot Breach podcasts, available on YouTube, SoundCloud, iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, and TuneIn. It basically covers operators that can feel overpowered when they take you down, but that aren't actually that great when you go to play them and also are not that great in the Wind Delta department. Blitz is the perfect example here. Getting rushed, flashed and meleeed by him can make me feel downright cheated, but when I go to play him, I get meleeed through the front of the shield by the first enemy I flash. Okay then. And his win delta over the last two seasons pretty much reflects this. That's not to say that increasing player comfort is not on the dev's agenda, as we will see later, but at the very least it explains why some of these frustrating ops are not yet getting nerfed. A few more interesting things I want to point out before we move on to the defenders. Ash and Twitch have both increased their pick rates by a couple of percent or so, and they are still the most popular attackers by a country mile. Most attackers are always statistically underpicked because every other match has both of these ops on the team. Their win deltas are also up slightly compared to the last season, but at plus 1%, this is not a strong indication that they are too powerful. I do find it slightly sad though that an operator that brings no vital utility to the team gets picked in 7 out of 10 rounds. I get that she's a good fragger and all, but I personally find operators with an interesting and useful gadget more appealing. Does Ash need a nerf? Maybe not. I personally think that the speed advantage of a 3 speed is still infinitely more valuable than the armor advantage of 1 speeds and I would like to see the movement of the 3 types of ops brought a little closer together still. I've seen some arguments in the past for making all operators the same speed and I do fully agree that that would solve a whole bunch of issues I experience when playing, but I also see that it would change the feel of the game quite a bit and it's debatable whether that would be the right thing to do. Nevertheless, slowing down 3 speeds would definitely be a great way at reducing Ash's pick rate without having to nerf her specifically. Glass's performance has come down a bit and I wonder what his expected rework will do to his performance and pick rate. I guess we'll see in about 3 months time if the rework goes live with the start of year 4. Last but not least, I think it is also worth mentioning the new Operator Nomad. I was expecting her to be an underperformer due to her lackluster guns and the pre-release nerfs to her gadget. But hey, look at that, she's actually doing quite well with a mildly positive win delta. GG devs, you got this one right, I was wrong. But now let's head on over to the defenders and here we will also get some explanations on why certain characters are getting changed. Rook has been the best performing defender for 4 seasons in a row now. I mention it every time I make a video about these charts. He is underappreciated for sure. His gadget is deployed at the beginning of the round and as long as everyone grabs a plate, there is no possibility of failure. Almost every other gadget requires the operator to stay alive in order to get the most out of it, but as Rook you can increase the chances of winning gunfights for each and every one of your teammates before the round even starts starts. You are then free to peek whatever you want, your job is done. Doc has increased in both popularity and performance since the last season and so there we have our explanation for the MP5 nerf. Kavera has also increased in pick rate and win delta and even at plat and diamond level she is currently one of the best performing defenders in the game. We don't have any data at lower ranks but it is likely that she is even more of a menace there. The devs highlight this in their commentary where they explain, we are trying to make her less frustrating to play against and reduce her power level at low to medium levels. 
Lowering the damage, the number of bullets that need to hit the chest of an enemy to put them in the down but not out state should be the same as before, but we reduce the penalty of being hit by one shot. Thanks to this, we can also normalize the falloff curve to be more consistent with other pistols, which gives Kavera increased range and versatility. All of that is pretty much in line with what I mentioned in my recent test video, but one thing I did miss was the aspect of getting shot once. Before the upcoming changes, a single hit at close range is still pretty much a death sentence. Any goo mine, electrical wire or even a fart in your general direction is enough to take you down. Now at 65 damage, her pistol is still a two shot weapon, but at least one shot won't be so devastating for the attacker anymore. A lot of players argued that she did not need a nerf and I think they are completely right. The nerf was not needed as such, but the objective of these changes is not necessarily to change her performance, but to make her less frustrating to play against. We will see how this plays out, but I still believe that she will be fine in the long run. Legion is another of the highest picked and highest performing defenders and interestingly, his stats are virtually identical to 3 months ago. He's a very useful operator to have in the team but again, not really in the territory of being too powerful. Jaeger and Bandit are quite interesting because they have basically changed places throughout the year. Bandit used to be the most picked defender in Season 1 and 2, but was overtaken by Jaeger in Season 3 and 4. Both have remained quite stable in terms of their pick rate over the last 3 months, but performance has increased just that little bit. Capcan and Frost are another interesting pair to look at since their stats in relation to each other are basically unchanged but they have both slipped to the left and down. This continues the interesting trend that the devs pointed out last season that these two ops seem to rise and fall in tandem. Many of the underperforming ops are also not changed all that much. Smoke, Castle and Tachanka sit comfortably in the bottom left corner of the table with slightly changed performances. Bikini has obviously not been pulling his weight in Season 4 because it seems that Tachanka's performance has once again fallen to the very bottom edge of the chart. Must try harder next season, unless we're getting a rework. <laughs> Uh, that's not a hint by the way, I'm literally just taking a wild guess and it may or may not happen. Uh, please don't get your hopes up or pitchforks out, whatever whatever your, your opinion would be. Clash has had a pretty miserable season. Uh, she was new three months ago and not getting picked all that much even then, but now her pick rate is the lowest of all and her performance is so abysmal that the devs had to add her win delta separately. Over the last season, if you had a clash on your team, you were almost 11% less likely to win than with any other character instead of her. And that's at Platt and Diamond level where you would expect the teams to be the most organized and to be able to take advantage of her the most. That's a clear yikes from me and perfectly explains why they are switching the SPSMG9 over to full auto. Last but not least, the new op Kaed has also been quite weak since introduction. His shotgun and sniper pistol can do a lot of damage in the right hands even after the nerfs, but single shot weapons will always be harder to use than full auto guns and his Org A3 is simply one of the worst SMGs in the game. The devs are buffing the gun slightly in the next patch and this is how they're explaining it. Kaed is performing below our expectations. We want to take a deep look in the future to make him more attractive for the utility and creativity that he brings to the team. That's perfectly fair. There are a few cool things you can do with him like tricking hatches on certain sites, but all in all he's just not been used to his fullest potential yet and especially his weapons make him an underwhelming performer in ranked. The devs do go on to say that, for now the ADS of the Org A3 was too slow, closer to an assault rifle than an SMG. Um, yeah, no. <laughs> His ADS speed was not closer to a rifle, it was the exact same 450 milliseconds that we see for all rifles and as much as this explanation makes it seem that this was a conscious choice, my money is still on the fact that this was a mistake. It just never made any sense for this one SMG to be slower to ADS than all others. And in before any comments saying, but the org is a rifle, you don't know guns. <laughs> no, the definition of a submachine gun is a select fire carbine in pistol caliber, right? 
If you take a short rifle and put pistol bullets in it, it is by definition an SMG and Kaid's Org in real life is called the Org Para and it is chambered for 9x19mm ammo. So thank you everyone who commented in the past with varying degrees of courtesy telling me that I don't know what I'm talking about but no, this really is an SMG. Thank you for attending my TED talk. And those are pretty much all of the most interesting operators in terms of their pick rate, performance or the change in stats from last season. What do you think about the positions of your favorite operators? Is there anything in this season's stats that surprised you? Leave a comment below and with that, thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next episode.